Ezra. The armor I wear is 500 years old. I reforged it to my liking. But the battles, the history, the blood all lives within it. And the same goes for every Mandalorian. This armor is part of our identity. It makes us Mandalorians who we are. Sabine Wren and Ulrich Wren Mandalorian armor developed a legendary reputation that was feared across the galaxy and was visually distinctive with its honeycomb plate patterns and menacing T-shaped visors. The armor was made of Beska, a metal extremely resistant to damage and malleable enough to be forged into armor. The signature innovation of the Mandalorians was the mining and tempering of Beska. The metal was found only on Mandalorian worlds. An ancient tradition and vital part of Mandalorian culture was forging the Beska into armor, which was carried out by Mandalorian armorers, who could also forge Beska into other gear like whistling birds. Beska was also used to forge weapons such as crush gaunts and beskids. The Mandalorians were very protective of their armor and the Beska, claiming that it belonged only to them and refusing to give it to anyone not related to the warrior culture as evidenced when the Mandalorian warrior Din Djarin only allowed Boba Fett to retake possession of his Mandalorian armor after learning that Fett was of Mandalorian heritage. However, despite the Mandalorians' claim that both their armor and Beskar belonged only to them, several non-Mandalorians, such as the crime lord Dryden Voss, Trandoshan big game hunter Garnak, and Tempest runner Luna D had Mandalorian armor in their possession. Furthermore, Boba Fett's infamy led to several bounty hunters emulating the skilled mercenary by wearing knockoff Mandalorian armor, since knockoff Mandalorian gear was in no short supply in the bounty hunter profession. Despite not wearing a full set of Mandalorian armor, bounty hunter Carib Dis possessed a Mandalorian vambrace equipped with whistling birds. Additionally, some non-Mandalorian individuals also sported Beskar equipment, such as Envis Nest, who had Beskar gauntlets, and an unidentified Arcona bounty hunter who wore a set of Beskar armor. On top of the fabled armor, Mandalorian warriors were equipped with anti-Jedi tools such as jetpacks, magnetized boots, tactical displays, and armed gauntlets that featured weaponry and tools designed to combat the abilities of the Jedi. Some of this weaponry not only helped combat but outright mimicked Jedi abilities, such as their wrist-mounted sonic repulses that knocked objects away like a force push would. They generally favored WESTAR-35 blaster pistols and Z-6 jetpacks, which could project missiles. The Rising Phoenix was the training Mandalorians undertook to enhance their jetpack skills. The archetypal Mandalorian starfighter design was called the Comiat class fighter, transport. Mandalorian warriors possessed advanced combat training from their many wars that dated to before the Republic's existence. However, it wasn't until their conflicts with the Jedi that they developed their signature combat style. This style entailed a Mandalorian utilizing a mix of melee, ranged, and hand-to-hand -hand techniques while incorporating the technology in his or her vambraces to surprise a Jedi Knight in combat, allowing the Mandalorian to finish the Jedi off. Mandalorian warriors continued to utilize this style of combat against the Jedi for some time as well as against other opponents. They were also known to perform headbutts known as Keldabe Kisses, a term which shared its name with Mandalore's former capital of Keldabe. The Darksaber became a feared weapon in the days of the Old Republic as Mandalorian warriors of House Vishla used it to slay many Jedi. When the Jedi claimed the weapon and stored it in the Jedi Temple, Mandalorian warriors would raid the temple to reclaim the weapon that had become a symbol of their warrior ways. During the Clone Wars, the weapon also came to symbolize leadership of Death Watch as well as House Vishla. Cubism was a popular Mandalorian art movement during the Clone Wars. After the war, the paintings that had depicted the awfulness of war were used to promote and glorify it instead. Mandalorians typically trended towards strong angled and hexagonal lines, such as diamond and honeycomb shapes, in their architecture, vehicles, clothing, and even haircuts. The Darksaber notably reflected this style, with an angular pommel, handguard, and blade emitter. Sabine Wren a Mandalorian and a member of the Spectres, was a talented graffiti artist who personalized and painted her armor. A statue of Tar Vishla was erected on Mandalore and became a symbol for hope and Mandalorian history. When the Empire constructed an outpost on the statue, some Mandalorians saw this as offensive, eventually destroying the outpost to restore the emblematic statue's appearance. Several Mandalorians decorated their Beskar armor with their clan symbols. In addition, some Mandalorian armor bore the Mythosaur skull emblem, one of the traditional symbols in Mandalorian iconography.